If I asked you to name a cricketer whose cricket has an impact beyond the playing field, whose name would come to mind? Would it be Virat Kohli or Elise Perry? Maybe Marazan Kapp or Jimmy Anderson? Truth is, there are many, many different possibilities and everyone likely has a different answer. But now imagine this. What if the person whose cricket was having an impact beyond the field wasn't a high profile name? What if it was you? While scrolling through Instagram in the off season, I stumbled upon a particular Instagram account that immediately caught my attention. I found myself captivated by runs for research and its intention and mission. But instead of me trying to explain it, let me introduce you to Jake, the founder of Runs for Research, and allow him to explain it firsthand and what it's all about. <laughs> Runs for Research is a initiative uh, aimed at club cricketers to raise money for Alzheimer's Research UK through their performances uh, at, at club cricket level. And where did the idea originate? So unfortunately, uh, it starts with my grandfather passing away in the back end of 2020. Massive cricket fan kind of led to, to my dad playing, myself playing, my sister playing. Um, and then he passed away at the end of his life. He, he suffered with Alzheimer's. So you you go through that that period of, of how are we gonna how are we gonna honour him ultimately. There was there was a funeral and, and that was in COVID, um, limited attendance, kind of all of that stuff. So it kind of felt like we, we hadn't given him a, a proper send off to, to a certain extent. So I kind of thought, well, we, we can come up with, with something here. I felt like I wanted to raise something for, for Alzheimer's research because it, it affects so many people. And therefore, kind of coming up with a concept that, that linked that that with cricket. There's there's countless ways that that, that could be done. Um, but one that we hadn't seen uh, was the runs for research concept. So kind of that was that was the, the inspiration, I suppose. Jake's experience of his grandfather's battle with Alzheimer's struck a chord with me. This personal connection resonated because my own grandmother went through a similar struggle with Alzheimer's and she too ultimately succumbed to her illness. It's not just the obvious impact that it has on the person who is suffering from the illness. It's the impact the disease has on the people around them, the family, the friends or spouse. And in my grandfather's instance, he watched his partner of 50 years slowly deteriorating. In fact, Alzheimer's research paint a very stark picture of just how many of us are likely to encounter Alzheimer's ourselves. Because if nothing changes, one in two people will see their lives devastated by dementia, either by caring for someone with the condition, developing it themselves, or both. So the need is obvious. Alzheimer's Research UK exists to find a cure and Runs for Research exists to raise funds. But how does it work? How are funds raised through everyone's performance for Runs for Research? So for, for every run that, that a club cricketer scores after they've signed up, that, that equals 5p. Um, every wicket equals 50p. Um, and then throughout the whole season, obviously players will have uh, seasons of, of varying degrees of, of quality. Um, some may may score a few runs, take a few wickets, and, and the donation might come to to less than ten. Um, some some may have more se- uh, more lucrative seasons, um, and the donation may be somewhere above fifty. We've we've had players in in the past with with donations over a hundred, and in reality, over the course of the season, now those those donations kind of tot up, um, and then the player then makes a donation at the end of the year. But you'd think that with five pence per run and fifty pence for a wicket, the total donated may not be that much. But there's great power in big numbers. So in 2021, year one, the, the original goal was, was 100 players. Um, I thought that, that a combination of, of my own teammates, people that I've come across uh, uh, across the cricketing community over the last sort of 10 years of playing, uh, my support. Um, but actually, we ended up with 257 players, uh, which was a massive a massive over overachievement in, in relation to the initial goal, I suppose. So then year two... The goal was, of course, to, to 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 try and build on that, hoping that that the the success of year one would kind of spread out. We didn't really set any major goals. Um, maybe ten thousand pound was a was a, a goal, um, but but year two's participants was five hundred and thirty three. Um, so again, we 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 more more than doubled in in year two. Um, so that was that was a massive bonus. Year three, so the season that that's just finished. Again, no real no real aim for for participants. Um, but we ended up with 893 participants. So 
a mass again a massive growth, not quite double, um, but again, I, I can't really ask for more than than that in terms of participation. So over the over the three years, we've raised just over thirty three thousand pound. So year one was was just under six. Year two was just over eleven, and last year was was about fifteen and a half. So again, we're 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 moving forward. One of the big the big targets of last year was to get to that thirty thousand pound total um, across the three years of, of run story steps. Um, so, and we achieved that kind of in in November time once the the donation started to come in after the end of the season. Eight hundred and ninety three participants raising more than fifteen thousand pounds alone just last season. That is incredible. Jake is incredibly modest, playing down just how much time and effort goes into coordinating the campaign. But where does the data come from, and how is it tracked and logged? Yeah, so this this is the this is about to be the fourth year, and and years one and two were very much learning curves, um, because again with with a target of a hundred players, it very very felt like that could be a manual process, um, because it wouldn't be that much in in the in the reams of data collection. Um, so 257 became a, a slight issue. Um, year two, kind of, we didn't know where we were going to go. But if, again, it was, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll trawl on here with, with a manual process. And again, 533 players is an awful lot to be looking at every week of, of play cricket scorecards. Because the process, again, is, is to go on to play cricket, look for that player's scorecard from the weekend just past, and put in a, a spreadsheet how many runs and how many wickets they took. That was a, a time-consuming task that was taking sort of six, seven, eight hours a week to the extent of it. I, I would never say that it became mature, but it became a, a significant effort. A big thing that, that was, was aimed towards when we when we began year three was to try and simplify this process. Um, and as, unfortunately, because um, I'm an accountant by trade, I have access to compl- uh, p- people, people that can understand things in the world of automation, um, and to to a lesser extent, robotics uh, that can that can automate things um, pretty effectively. So I partnered with a company that that I've worked with on a on a on a sort of work basis um, called Bots for that, based in in Surrey, um, and they built a, a computer program that effectively will do the processes that I was following manually automatically. So that process that process takes a couple of hours a week. Um, identifies me any issues that, that may have arisen, whether that be a play cricket profile changing or, or something along those lines. Um, and it allows me to kind of focus on on pulling the data out of it that I need, as opposed to actually having to do countless, co- uh, constant hours of, of data collection. Jake keeps a leaderboard of participants on the Runs for Research website. So I asked him if the competition between participants was an important way of keeping people engaged in the campaign. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think we we've tried to 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 kind of build a little bit of competition. Um, we we all as club cricketers will we'll spend hours on play cricket, double checking who's the leading run scorer, who's the, the most wicket taker. Um, and this is kind of a a, a a bigger scale of that. Um, again, you you do build healthy competition, whether that be between players in different ends of the country that have never met each other, but also within clubs. Um, run the leaderboard, they stick the club name in, and it's just bringing up a filter of of their players. So people can see who's got the the most the, the sorry the highest donation in in their club ultimately, um, but yeah, completely deliberate. And I think we we're trying to to share as much as we can on social media and and the data there that's available, whether that be weekly performances. Um, again, a, a big thing for us is is being able to share the the top ten uh, high scores of the week, the top ten uh, spells of the week, just so that people can and kind of get a bit of exposure, even if it's. They took their first five for on a Saturday. We, we're trying to shout people out to, because because as much as we're doing that for the benefit of the player, it's also doing it for the benefit of ourselves because we can then kind of attract people into the into the platform and and hopefully then they sign up to the initiative as well. What's so incredibly interesting about this is that it doesn't matter what league, whether it's men's or women's, senior or junior, everyone has the exact same potential to raise funds for the court. It's a perfectly level playing field. It's Division Twenty of the Essex League. It's the Lincolnshire Premier League. It's it's every and it's every league in between. It's Saturday cricket. It's midweek cricket. It's county age group cricket. If if we've got young players involved, um, it's friendly cricket where everybody gets to go. Also, if it's shown on play cricket, it's pulling into our statistics. And the way the way that I always describe this, and and I don't know where it came from, is every run is worth five p. 
it doesn't matter whether it's a Premier League hundred or it's a it's a one not out in Division Twenty. It's still only worth five p, and the same for a wicket. Um, and I think that that's what what makes it it very unique in that regard. That the people that are then looking at that leaderboard on a weekly basis may not know what standard that player is playing. But if somebody scores a thousand runs in the season, that's a thousand runs whatever level of cricket you're playing at. Um, and, and again, that's where the competition is lies. You, you'll have players from all different areas of the country that have all scored a thousand runs. Some some of those thousand runs may be maybe really really impressive. Others may be less less so. But ultimately, it's still worth it's still worth the same value. Now, as we've heard, all the funds raised and the awareness that the campaign generates is all on behalf of Alzheimer's Research UK. So, what's been their response? And the relationship you've built with them. So again, it was it was one of those things in in year one when the idea kind of came about, and we, we tested the waters with a few of, of my friends, and it was okay. Then we're going to reach out to them and, and kind of see what what they suggest because again, in in the in the modern society, there is red tape, there is things that you have to to cover off, and I think the initial support from from their side uh, across a couple of different account managers that that I've been involved with over the four years has, has, has been nothing but 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 positive and, and really really helpful. They they are there to to kind of support me. Um, in all in all honesty, there's there's not that much support needed in in essence because it, it kind of runs itself. Uh, but again, just just to feel that there is somebody there that that is benefiting from the work we're doing, I suppose, and that they can then kind of be passing on to to the people that are actually doing the the research in in the back office. Um, again, I think the, the 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 reaction from their side has been, as I say, been completely positive. Um, we were nominated for an award um, after year two um, for um, kind of fundraising generally because again it, it started to get a little bit more recognition with them. But again, it's it's as as you say, I I think that the big the big area that that I've always looked at with this is the easy out option would have been oh we want people to, to sign up to play cricket and then at the end of the season they donate a tenner. But that tenner doesn't feel like it's anything. Whereas the tenner that you've raised through scoring 50 runs and taking and taking 20 wickets, it may be the same amount, but it, it does feel like something a little bit different. Ultimately, still goes to the same cause, um, but you probably feel like you've earned it and, and that, that donation probably means a little bit more when it was generated by yourself. They can't they can't be any more more supportive from from my side. Because as much as much as we may sit here and we, we think we've got a big team, in reality, outside of a couple of assistants, you you are looking at the team. But Jake is primarily responsible for coordinating the activity of the charity and the campaign. But the Runs for Research website lists a host of supporters who are all contributing in a variety of ways. So I asked him what their roles were and how their support came about. Yeah, so I think we've, we, again, I think one one thing that, that I've always tried to do since year one is that this is the main cause of the fundraising, that the runs and the wickets, but of course, with with an initiative like this, people want to show their support in different ways. So in year one, the first the first way we wanted people to show their support was we we introduced the bat stickers. Um, and again, the bat stickers uh, a, a perfect way because people will stand there in the middle and, and and see that sticker and go, "What's that?" That's the question. You've got you've got potentially got a sign. So again, as as a as an initiative that is purely raising money for a charity, we don't have any funds coming in. So we rely on the generosity of of these supporters to to kind of allow us to to kind of build the the player base. So as I say, in year one, um, we we partnered with uh, Viper Cricket based out of Peterborough, um, who kindly has provided us bat stickers since year one. So every time we need a we need a new roll of bat stickers, he he, he sources them from a supplier himself as a, as a as a cricket bat kind of producer and 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 cricket kind of manufacturer generally, um, and he will will send those out to me and then I can then distribute them out to our player base. Of course, once those stickers are there, it's okay, then how are we going to get them to the player base? We need to send them in the post. Um, again, a letter is not cheap as much as it's... Uh, and, and again, we've got no funds to, to work with. So it was rolling on a, on a postal provider. Fortunately, I, I've got a very generous employer, TC Group, that, that, that were happy to to kind of make use of their postage facility so that I could send out bat stickers to, to players. Um so that's that. They're kind of go side by side. Over the over the three or four years, we we've kind of dabbled in various other areas as well. Um, so we in in the first couple of years and, and still ongoing actually is um, we've got a runs for research kind of t shirt uh, that is produced by Kai Cricket again based in in the local area to myself. 
um, that uh, is available for for retail. Um, and again, with profits from that donated to to the cause, um, ge- very generously by Chris. Um, again, we've had other very similar manufacturers kind of produce us products in their runs for research name. So, so Mullet Cricket have produced us some bobble hats. Uh, Icon Sports have produced us some wristbands. Um, and then I think there's kind of a combination of then other supporters that kind of there in the background to to assist us. So whether that be Luke Blackmore that is producing our, our website um, and, and allowing that automation from from the system to, to give people the ability to see their, their donations. Um, obviously, the guys at Bots for that to have produced the system that they have to to make the data entry is 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 a massive massive help. And, and as much as as much as some of the other guys mentioned uh, have been massive parts, I don't think we would be into year four without their work. Because again, it, it got to year three and it was like I can't I can't do this. Um, I want to do it, but but it's not sufficient and not sustainable. But then again, it, it's then kind of other other partners that, that then come on board in in purely a kind of a social media capacity. That be the the Stump Stumps and Beer Beer Pumps podcast that that have kind of taken us on board as a as kind of a charity partner. Very much a case of of kind of just sharing all our posts to to across their community because ultimately we're we're both working in the same in the same space ultimately. And then again, one one thing that that is really really exciting that that's coming um, in May. Um, is our partnership with uh, Cricket Casuals. Um, Cricket Casuals are, are a series of content creators, um, and there's a uh, a content creators cricket match coming in in uh, in May, and we were asked to be part to participate in that as well. Or myself, I, I'm participating in that. Um, again, as part of that, they will be we will be their charity partner for the whole event, um, and their their sponsors of the event. We'll be making a donation based on the runs and wickets in the same metric as, as players throughout the whole tournament. So there's going to be three matches played. All the runs, all the wickets will be will be contributed to in the same way as, as a player would on a Saturday. So massive, massive thanks to them. Um, and again, that that's kind of a massive area for for us to be able to to, to kind of speak to, to people in the in the industry that have got contacts across the cricket community. They've got access to to players that could become runs for research participants either now or in the future. Beyond just club cricketers raising funds, Runs for Research have a number of other initiatives that they participate in that are more designed for raising awareness, in particular, participating in friendly cricket matches. So, Jake, how did that come about? Yeah, so in, in 2023, it's it kind of came to light. I think over the previous years, people had, had kind of thrown suggestions my way as to we should do a game for this. Um, one thing that, that we always do at the end of, end of a season is we come up with a team of the year based on the performances that the people have scored and, and, and wickets taken during the year. And, and somebody made a passing comment that it would be really good to get this side together, maybe play against a, a competitive club because these these sides of these teams of the years have got some serious cricketers in them. Ultimately, I'm not sure there's going to be many club cricketers that would want to play against it. Is it because to say these sides have got have got minor counties players in it, people scoring thousands of runs, taking 50 wickets. It would be a very, very competitive cricket side across anywhere in the country. But but when kind of that was was kind of considered, it, it kind of felt appropriate to then maybe kind of branch out again, not not with any intention to to raise funds or 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 kind of yeah generate income anywhere else, but more of a case of bringing people together. So so 2023 we 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 dipped our toe in the water um, and held a game at Sarasbury Athletic Cricket Club in Hampshire. Um, they were our leading club in in 2022, um, and then followed them followed it up in 2023. Um, and actually, currently leading the, the way in 2024, but but yeah, so they were they were chosen to be the venue for for the first game. Obviously, very much a a place that that is a long way from where I am. Uh, so again, gathering players that were willing to make the trip down. Some some were were willing to make further trips than others. Others were were in the more local area in the Hampshire and and bordering counties. And and that was a really really good event because it felt that we were supporting Sarasbury because we were hosting a game at there. People were putting money behind their butt. But also, we were bringing together people that had spoken remotely for for a couple of years, um, and just generally in, enjoying each other's company. A real game was played in really, really good spirits. We did come out on top, um, which was always nice. But but again, a, a, a really a really positive day that kind of meant made meant, meant that we wanted more. Not not to the extent that we want to run this as a as a club side that, that plays every Saturday, but just for a. Yeah, just just on the odd occasion, maybe two or three times a year for for this side to get together, or 
not necessarily the side to get together, but but people to represent the cause together. So, so going into twenty twenty four, um, the goal ultimately is is to have three games in twenty twenty four. The first game is a very prestigious uh, honour. We've been asked to play in the Burley Park Cricket Week, um, which is is a uh, a long standing event in in just up the road from myself, uh, and we'll be playing as as part of their Cricket Week in a, in a day fixture. Um, so that's immediately a kind of a slight variation on the format, but again, a lovely ground, a lovely setting for for people to come together and, and effectively do exactly what we did in in twenty twenty three. As of an hour ago, we announced our second fixture. Um, so that's going to be played in the north of the country in, in Shelley, in, in just outside Huddersfield. As I say, and that's going to classify as our northern fixture. So again, we want people to, to be accessible that they've not got to travel down to Hampshire from, from the north of the country if they want a game. Uh, so they, they, can, they, can, they can head to, to Shelley. And, and those, both of those games are taking place in July. Um, and obviously all the info on those is, is, is in our, uh, on our social media. Again, we're we're currently sourcing our venue for for the for the southern fixture. Um, I know the guys at Salisbury will will kind of act as a backup if if we struggle to to find somewhere else. But but in all honesty, I think probably three fixtures, maybe four fixtures in twenty twenty four, just because I think that the birdie fixture will probably be a a repeat game each year because it's a it's a prestigious honour. But maybe that plus three of the fixtures each year to me that that kind of feels like a sweet spot because. Because ultimately, we're asking these players to to come and play for us. They're probably giving up a game of cricket for themselves, and and for their own clubs, and and that's not what I want. Because ultimately, that's that's part of the cause of what I'm playing club cricket. Um. So so yeah, that they're they're really exciting. Um. I'm hoping that I might be able to play in all three. Um. But again, it's again commitments and 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 my own club commitments mean maybe two. I think I think the two arranged so far will definitely be on the. I'll definitely be on the field. So to the pivotal matter collecting funds from the participants and handing it over to Alzheimer's Research UK. As the numbers grow, this has the potential to become an administrative and governance nightmare, especially for someone who is an accountant by trade. But Jake found a way around that. He has created a Just Giving page. So exactly that. I think in in year one, it was very much a case of, I don't want to be held responsible for this, especially with the, the kind of the job that I'm in. Um, I don't want to be, be seen to, to holding anybody else's funds and, and, and hold with, withholding it. So it was just agreed, we'll just use a Just, just Giving page. Um, just Giving page is going to go directly to Alzheimer's Research on a monthly basis. Their, their fees and stuff are, are relatively low. The, the player doesn't get charged to, to use that. So once the season ends, they can go on the website, pull up their name, see what their donation amount is, and just make a donation to the Just Giving page. Um, obviously, then we're tracking the Just Giving page kind of religiously in, in September, October, November, December to, to kind of tick off people as, as and when those donations come in. And then it's then just a case of, yeah, chasing people up as and when we need it. I think the, the really frustrating thing on the donation perspective is is the number of players that don't donate at the end of the season, which again, as as much as 33,000 is is a massive number, the, the problem is is when you know what the number could have been in the background, it's it can be very frustrating, especially when players have, have liaised with you all throughout the year. Um, they've been very vocal on social media about supporting the cause, and actually, the bit that we want them to do is the donation at the end. I'd I'd prefer nobody to say a word about runs for research all year, but make a donation than shout and scream about it and it not achieve anything. So yeah, so that 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 is probably the hardest part of the whole job. But but again, I, I can't tell my nose about thirty three thousand pounds in three years. Ultimately, so if this has piqued your interest and you'd like to participate in the Runs for Research campaign, Jake has all the information you need. So our our website, runstoresearch.org.uk, kind of has a lot of our our info on it. Um, It's got some details as to to what we've discussed about, so kind of what what, what the cause is all about. Um, But also on there is the sign-up link for for players to get involved. Um, It's a very simple Google form where people have just got to, to fill in the name, email address, um, best contact method and then the clubs that they're going to be playing for so we know where to look um, again kind of that 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 content is, is quite stagnant just because there's not really much to, to add on a website because most people are consuming their content now via social media so we, we focus primarily on on two platforms um, Instagram probably being the the most active just because I think there's the, a, a large chunk of people are, are, are on that platform um, and again constantly sharing the link to sign up on on there 
but also, as, as mentioned earlier, lots of graphics, lots of data, uh, lots of shouting out people that, are, that have scored runs and taken wickets at the weekend. Um, and in theory, that content is then just about mirrored over on X Twitter so that people, again, you've, you've got two different methods to to, to kind of, uh, yeah, absorb the content. I think you, you find that those two kind of platforms attract very different people. Um, I think the cricket community on Twitter X is very is very different to that on Instagram. Um, but but kind of for us, it, it it doesn't really matter. It's it's we just want players to get involved um, and 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 share ultimately share what what's what's going on and just telling their their team their teammates people that that they kind of interact with on those platforms that, that they're involved in this cause and maybe they should do the same. For my part, while I missed participating in runs for research during the 2023 season, but this has struck such a chord with me personally with respect to the connection to my grandmother that I would like to participate retrospectively, as it were. So, as Jake said, every run that I scored in the 2023 season should count five pence, and every wicket I took should count 50. Now, if I look back, and I'm going to consider all my friendly games and my league games, Play cricket tells me that I scored a total of 294 runs. So at 5p per run, that's £14.70. On the bowling front, poor season of bowling, I only took two wickets. So that's another £1. However, I want to contribute a little bit more. So I'm going to change Jake's rules ever so slightly uh, in honour of my grandmother. I'm going to extend the wickets to not just bowling, but to fielding as well. So back to play cricket, and it tells me that I was responsible, or I took 10 catches and was responsible for two runouts. For each wicket, I'm going to still contribute 50p per wicket. So for the catches, that's 10 catches at 50p each is another £5. And for the runouts, that's two runouts, 50p each, that's another pound. So in total, then, my contribution for the 2023 season for myself is £21.70. And I'm going to then contribute that through Jake's Just Giving page. And the funds will be then taken directly to Runs for Research and their association with Alzheimer's Research UK. I've already committed to taking part in the 2024 season and I'm looking forward to seeing my name reflected on the Runs for Research leaderboard. I hope to see your name there too. If this video has inspired you to get involved, then as Jake said, look at the website, sign up using the Google Doc for Get your name onto the leaderboard for 2024 and try to beat my contribution. I'll be trying to beat my 2023 contribution and contribute more to Runs for Research and the work they're doing for Alzheimer's Research UK. Until next time, from myself, Mike, the old bloke playing cricket. Take care. Bye-bye.